Hey parents, are you worried about how often to feed your newborn baby and when you do feed them, not sure how much they should be getting? In this video, I'm giving you a glimpse into the Built to Birth Part 2 online course that is filled with foundational need-to-know information about the postpartum period to help you get answers about how much and often your newborn will eat in the initial days and weeks after birth. So here we go. As adults, we very much live by the clock. We schedule out our days, a lot of time for work, to eat, to sleep, etc. But babies aren't born with the same kind of schedule mentality, which can make it challenging for new parents to know what baby needs and when, which can sometimes cause stress and frustration for parents. In this session, we're going to be talking about how much and often baby will eat so that you get a general idea of what to give them when they need it and reduce stress and help make caring for your baby a more more confident process. In the early days after birth, one of the big concerns parents express is that they're unsure if their baby is getting enough milk. The important thing to remember during those first couple of days is that baby's tummy is very small when they are born and the colostrum that you are producing, mama, is the very best thing for them both in quality and in quantity. The first day baby is born, their bellies are only the size of a marble and can only hold about three to five milliliters, which is barely a teaspoon of milk. So when I say that you're probably making enough milk to satisfy and sustain your baby, I mean it. By about day three, your baby's tummy is about the size of a walnut and has a capacity of about 22 to 27 milliliters now, which is about between one and two tablespoons of milk. So still not a ton. By a week after birth, baby's tummy is the size of an apricot and can hold around 45 to 60 milliliters, which is about two to four tablespoons. And by a month old, their tummies are the size of an egg and able to hold around 80 to 150 milliliters, which is now between two to four ounces. So your baby doesn't need to be born with you having copious amounts of breast milk already ready for them. Each stage as your milk comes in is in most cases perfectly designed to fit baby's current needs and then will change based off of baby's changing needs. Remember, breast milk supply is based on demand Demand. So when baby starts demanding more and really emptying the breast during your feeds, your body is going to register that and say, okay, I need to start making more milk for baby now. Now to give you some more assurance that baby is full and content after a feed, let's talk about some full cues that they may give you when they've had enough breast milk. Towards the beginning of the feed, before baby's hunger needs have been met, their hands will often be balled up and clenched into little fists. Throughout the duration of the feed, their hands will start to relax and loosen their grip. And by the end of the feed, a pretty positive sign that they are satisfied with how much milk they've gotten is whether their hands are soft and relaxed as opposed to their clenched fists at the beginning. Another sign that baby is happy with the amount of milk that they've drank is simply if they appear satisfied after the feed. They'll often be drowsy or happily alert. Now babies who struggle with reflex may be a little more fussy after a feed. This doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't full. It might just mean that their tummy is upset and they need to be burped or they need to relieve gas. Trying to keep feeding a baby who is struggling to work out a bubble in their tummy can make matters worse, so just try to burp them or help them pass their gas. We talk all about these things in the newborn care section of the course, so if you have a baby who has reflux, you can refer to those videos. Another way to determine if baby has successfully transferred milk from you to them is if you feel breast changes from the beginning of the feed to the end of the feed. If you feel like you started off full and after baby finished at the breast seems softer and emptier, then that's another good indication that baby is getting milk from your breast into their bellies. When trying to determine if baby is satisfied at the breast, you want to avoid using a timer, even though I know it's easier when we can go by the clock. The reason for this is because breast milk is made up of different parts called the foremilk and the hind milk. When baby is first drinking after the letdown, the first milk they are getting is mostly foremilk with just a little bit of hind milk. Foremilk is more watery and less fatty because the milk fat likes to stick to the walls of the alveoli, the little balloons that hold the milk. 
while letting the watery part of the milk slide right on by. So towards the end of the feed, with the more powerful suctions from your baby, and especially with massage from mama around the breast or even some breast compressions, the fatty part of the milk releases more, which is the hind milk. Both the foremilk and the hind milk is important for baby's health and satisfaction after a feed, as well as mama's milk production. And if mama is just basing each side or the total duration of the feed off the clock, then she runs the risk of creating a foremilk and hindmilk imbalance. So it's best to look for those signs in baby of satisfaction after a feed to determine if they are getting enough milk to satisfy their little bellies. And those signs are all immediate things to look for to reassure yourself that baby is getting enough. However, Two of the best indicators that baby is getting enough milk are not immediate, but is if they are gaining weight and having plenty of dirty diapers. In your workbook is a little chart that you can check out to help you see how many peas and poops your baby should be having in the first five days after birth. And basically, it's however many days old they are, that is the amount of peas and poops that you want them to have as well. So the first day you want them to have at least one pea and one poop when you change their diaper. The second day, they should be having about two peas and two poops. And those first couple of days, baby's poops are going to be that really sticky, tar-like poop called meconium, which we talk about in the session about changing your baby's diaper later on. Day three, baby should pee and poop three times in a 24-hour period. Day four, four peas, four poops, and day five, five peas and five poops. And at this point, their poop becomes a lot softer and runnier and sometimes it's a lot and sometimes it's hardly anything. Around day five is when baby's poops kind of level off a bit more and you won't, won't really be seeing them continue to grow day by day like you have been seeing in the last several days. Now this is just an approximation. At about day five, it's very normal for babies to be pooping twice a day to several times a day. And as the weeks go on, especially for breastfed babies, it's normal for babies to skip some days before going poop. Wet diapers are a really big thing to look at when counting diapers. We want to make sure that baby is staying hydrated and well fed and if pale colored pee is coming out and they're having regular bowel movements then we know that milk is going in. If baby is gaining weight, filling out their clothes more and more, fitting their diapers better over time, and just overall appears and behaves healthily, these are all indications that baby is getting enough milk to help them grow and thrive. Now at the beginning of the session, I mentioned that as adults, we like to live by a schedule, but newborns are not born with the same mentality. The best way to know when to feed your baby is by their cues, which I talk about in our newborn behavior session later on in this course. But when baby is awake, quietly alert, starting to lick their lips, or trying to suck on things around them or their hand, these are all cues that baby is getting hungry and it's a good time to feed them. Babies will generally eat around every one to three hours over the course of 24 hours. They will often wake you up at night for you to feed them, or if you need baby to gain weight or you're trying to feed them often to help with their jaundice levels, which we also talk about later, then you might need to wake them up every three hours through the night to help get in enough feedings. For those of you who really do like schedules, I will say that babies generally like routine and creating the routine of a eat, wake, sleep cycle can help parents feel more confident to know what their baby needs and when. For newborns, this eat, wake, sleep cycle is pretty simple. Baby generally will want to eat when they wake up. They will be awake for maybe five to 15 minutes and then be ready to sleep again for an hour and a half to two hours. And when they awake, they'll likely be hungry again. Sometimes this mini routine is super helpful for parents because when they are still learning how to communicate with their babies and how to differentiate between their cries and their different cues, knowing this basic routine can help them understand, okay, my baby just woke up and is crying. It's about, It's been about one to three hours since they last ate. It probably means that they're hungry again. Or if they've recently just ate and you're pretty confident that they ate enough, maybe they need some cuddles to help them go to sleep or they're uncomfortable and they need your help to be burped or they need their diaper to be changed before they can settle down for another nap. 
Routines with babies help a lot of parents feel like they have more control over their lives that have drastically changed. And while babies often thrive off of routines, strict schedules aren't recommended, especially when it comes to feedings. They can serve as guidelines and approximations, but if baby is crying and showing you hunger cues, it's best to respond to those hunger cues and feed them and not just expect them to have to wait another half hour or another hour to eat on a schedule. Strict feeding schedules can also impact milk supply and cause a decrease in milk production and output. So that's something to be aware of as well. But in general, baby will want to eat and should be eating around 8 to 12 times in a 24 hour period, whether that's on their own or that's on a routine that you've kind of set up for them. And when you are breastfeeding, don't think too much about quantity unless you absolutely have to. Instead of measuring the success of a feeding by the ounces your baby has drunk, measure it by how comfortable you felt throughout the feed, how content baby was during and after the feed, and how you spent the time bonding with them being skin to skin with you. Now, weight gain is important for a newborn. and After birth, babies generally lose about 10% of their body weight, and we want to see them gain that back as soon as possible. If babies are having a hard time with gaining weight or are facing other complications either due to their own challenge or a challenge with latch or mama's breast milk and supplementing with formula becomes a necessity, this doesn't mean that your breastfeeding journey has to end here. Breastfeeding doesn't have to be all or nothing. Any breast milk that baby gets in the first six months of life is shown to improve their short and long-term health. Lots of times, parents introduce formula without understanding the basic premise of breast milk production though, that without the demand, the supply decreases. And they'll notice that mama's milk supply decreases as formula is given. So if formula becomes a necessity, but you are still able to breastfeed, breastfeed first till baby has emptied out both breasts as much as possible, which you'll notice by the softness of your breast, as well as the slowed sucking and swallowing from baby as they finish off the milk, and then offer the bottle with the formula to, supply, to simply supplement what they need. With supplementing formula from a bottle after breastfeeding, you should know that sucking is a natural instinct for babies when something is placed in their mouth. So allow them to draw the nipple of the bottle into their mouth by gently placing it on their lips. And then when they stop sucking, avoid moving the nipple around in their mouth to stimulate more sucking from them because they likely will keep sucking. And when they do, they're going to get more milk, whether they're still hungry for it or not. So as soon as those sucks become slower or if baby dozes off to sleep, let them be done whether they've finished the bottle that you've given them or not. Now this is true unless your baby's pediatrician tells you otherwise. If you need to increase your milk supply and that's what's keeping baby from getting enough milk from you, pumping for five to 10 minutes after baby breastfeeds can help increase milk supply so that baby can be more satisfied at the breast without needing formula. If you are ever replacing formula with a breastfeeding session, you need to pump or hand express. In the early days before your mature milk comes in, hand expression works better than pumping, which we talked about in a previous session about hand expressing. So if for some reason you and baby must be separated and baby needs to be formula fed, hand express about 8 to 12 times in a 24 hour period. And then as your milk comes in, you can switch to a pump and still you want to be pumping about 8 to 12 times in a 24 hour period. If formula becomes a necessity for your baby, I would highly encourage you to work closely with your baby's pediatrician or better yet a lactation consultant who can provide you with the expertise and the necessary tools techniques and tips to help you continue on your breastfeeding journey as you just for the time being have to supplement with formula finding a lactation specialist who you can consult even virtually with is going to be extremely helpful I'll provide you a few links to recommended resources to find a consultant in the notes area of this session Mama and partners, I hope you are feeling more confident than you were before you began the session, now having more information about how much and often baby will eat. I'll end this session with this encouragement. Babies are born smart enough to not let themselves starve and will do their best 
one way or another to communicate with you what they need. It might take a bit of time to understand what they are saying to you through their cues or cries, but the more time that you spend with each other and learning about each other, the easier that communication will be. Your body and baby are created for each other with breastfeeding intended. Sometimes there are bumps in the road that make it feel like you aren't cut out for the journey, but I want to assure you that you are. And with the proper resources and information, you will be able to make the best decisions for you and your baby, no matter how long your breastfeeding journey lasts for. That was just one video, but if you want more answers to your very important questions, check out builttobirth.com if you want to learn more about my online childbirth and postpartum course. In the course, you'll get access to hours of practical information like the video that you just watched, or if you're not ready to join quite yet, check out my free mini birth class to learn some more great tips. So thanks for being with me in this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.